morning. Morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Just enjoy the music while we wait a moment for others to join us. Morning, Sally. Morning, Avril. Hello, Lynn. Morning, Nikki. Hello, Jennifer. Shelley. You're listening to Tim Wheater's uh, Medicine Man, a great favourite. So we'll just give it another couple of seconds and uh, we'll get started. Hello, Anne-Marie, Tessa. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Stephanie Baynard, speaking from the virtual Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary, just lowering that music a touch. Um, some of you may have been expecting Bev today, it's her usual day, so she's having a day off and, um, and you've got me instead. So, um, lovely morning here in Surrey and I hope it's just as nice wherever you are. So when you're ready, perhaps we can just have a couple of moments meditation before we go into our healing minute. So if you'd like to make yourself comfortable and choose a safe place to relax and focus on your breathing, if you're in a position to do so, and take some nice deep breaths, slow deep breaths in and out and allow those worries or concerns just to float up into the sky, into the nearest clouds and just gently drift away. So now imagine you're at the base of a remote mountain and as you look up it seems a long way up but your goal is to get to the top. You have just left a little mountain village and as you start your ascent, it's a gradual incline and you notice the vegetation, the trees and the birds singing. The sun is shining and as you start to gain height quickly and easily, stopping periodically to take in the view, you may become aware that this path you are using has been used by local people for many generations. And you keep going until you reach a plateau at the top of the mountain. So find yourself a place to sit where you have a good view and rest here for a moment and enjoy the peace. If you wish, you may like to ask for your guides to come close or for the company of angels or a dear and departed friend. Breathe in the clear mountain air and ask for inspiration. And you may wish to take your focus to the heart area from where we will, may choose to direct our healing energy today.
And as you come back into the awareness of your physical body, start to take a few deep breaths in and become aware of your feet on the ground and feel yourself grounded by visualizing those roots of your, like the roots of a tree from the soles of your feet going deeply down into the earth, anchoring you to the planet. And we'll commence our attunement. We give thanks that we are gathered here today and ask that our homes be filled with love, light and friendship and healing energies. Surround us in protection as we open our hearts and expand our consciousness to allow the flow of love and healing to come through us. As your crown chakra opens, allow a column of pure white light to flow down through your body. Feel the balance and harmony within your body as the earth energy rises up through the soles of your feet and your base chakra. Feel your connection to the universal source of unconditional love, balanced by the nurturing, protective love of Mother Earth. I'm now going to read the Great Invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, light has come forth into the minds of men. Light is now anchored on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, light has come forth into the hearts of men. Love has returned to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, purpose is guiding the little wills of men the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, the plan of love and light is working out and is cleansing harmful energies. Love, light and power are restoring the plan on earth. So as we go into our minute silence, we now ask that all those whose names we hold in the distant healing folder may receive what they need for their highest good. We also request healing for their loved ones, family and friends. And we, you may wish to add those in your own distant healing list. And we'd like to send healing worldwide and to all sentient beings. We can't forget the animal kingdom. May they all be placed in the healing light and receive that which they are allowed to receive for their highest good. And now we'll have a minute silence for reflection and healing.
thank you for sharing that lovely energy today and um, our thanks and blessings for all your help and to all our friends in spirit so um, notices today well we have um, yes on well today is the uh, Tuesday the 6th of July 2021 I need to say that to remind myself more than anybody and this Sunday the 11th of July Alan is taking another Healing For You session. It, he, it will follow from Doreen's Healing Minute on Sunday, so it would be around 10.30 a.m. when Alan starts this. Um, next Thursday, the 15th at 2 p.m., we have one of our guided meditations. And uh, both of those will be available on Zoom and on Facebook. And as usual, all details are on our website, um, on the Facebook page. So it'll be lovely to see you either on Sunday or Thurs next Thursday, the, the 11th or both. So um, today I was going to do a reading. And it's from a book. I think I did a reading from this once before, but it's some time ago now. Different reading, obviously. And it's, it's called My Grandfather's Blessing by um, Rachel Naomi Remen, MD. Dr. Remen's grandfather, a rabbi, saw life as a web of connection. He taught her that blessing one another is what fills our emptiness, heals our loneliness, and connects us more deeply to life. So Dr. Remen is a physician, a healer, and a storyteller, and she illustrates her advice through simple yet powerful stories. Now, this book was written about 20 years ago, and it's certainly very, very valid today. Um, she basically was a physician and discovered through her practice and her natural uh, kind heart, if you like, that there was more um, to healing people than just treating them physically. Uh, so she, beca she basically became a very much a caring person who worked with chronic illness, particularly cancer and other terminal illnesses. And um, she opened her mind to other possibilities and other ways of people healing. And this short story is called The Meeting Place. So of all the ways that people commonly deal with suffering, denial, spiritualization, substitution, few are places of refuge. Most will disconnect us from the very life we hope to bless and serve and may, oh, sorry, some may disconnect us from the very life we hope to bless and serve and may defeat us in fulfilling the purpose of our lives. The sad part of this is that we can never hide from suffering. Suffering is a part of being alive. Hiding ourselves means only that we will have to suffer alone. In the presence of suffering, everyone needs to find refuge. The difficulty we have in knowing where to find our strength came home to me when I taught a group of beginning medical students a class on genetic disease. The woman who had generously agreed to be interviewed for the class was a young mother who had recently discovered that she carried a gene which would arrest the brain growth of both her young children. Her loss was beyond words its dimensions instantly understandable by mothers since the beginning of time. I wondered how she would find a way to go on. And sitting there, listening to her telling her story, I began to silently pray for her. The students were young, and I was not sure how they would respond to her. Immediately after she left the room, there was in fact a moment of silence when something genuine, intimate, and profoundly human was in our midst. Sadly, it disappeared as the students rushed off to a discussion of the disease entity that had caused this tragedy. 
For the next half hour, they analyzed, labeled, and shared the search data and vast amounts of information about mental retardation. Slowly, I began to understand that the suffering we had witnessed had far exceeded the life experience in the room. No one had yet accumulated the wisdom to respond to it or the strength to be present for it. Confronted by something so vast and so impervious to all medical expertise, the students were struggling to contain it by understanding its pathology. They had sought refuge from suffering in their signs. But life does not work that way. Science is not a place of refuge. It cannot protect us from suffering. Hiding from suffering only makes us more afraid. Suffering is all around us. We may have friends and family who have lost a breast to cancer or who have AIDS or Alzheimer's. And no matter how young we are, we may have friends and family who die. It was a very short time ago that only those with a professional degree became intimately involved with such things. And almost everyone who died, died in a hospital. No longer. Suffering has escaped from hospitals and institutions and met us in our own living rooms. We avoid suffering only at the great cost of distancing ourselves from life. In order to live fully, we may need to look deeply and respectfully at our own suffering and the suffering of others. In the depths of every wound we have survived is the strength we need to live. The wisdom our wounds can offer us is a place of refuge. Finding this is not for the faint of heart, but then neither is life. And just one sentence from the little book of Kitchen Table Wisdom by the same author. The part in us that feels suffering is the same as the part that feels joy. Have you ever noticed how difficult it is when somebody is in a deep state of suffering and you want to sympathise, empathise, console? It can be very difficult. And very often at the end of the day, words just don't do it. Um, and that's where healing comes in. Um, healing is a way of giving that support without too many words. And, um, and of course, at the Harry Edwards Sanctuary, uh, Mr. Harry Edwards himself was world famous for his distant healing. And the sanctuary is still very well known worldwide today for distant healing. So if you ever feel that uh, you need support or help in any way and you're reluctant to speak to somebody about it or, or you're, you're witnessing somebody in this situation and you feel awkward or embarrassed or unsure as to how to speak with them or comfort them, um, you can always contact the Harry Edwards Sanctuary and request distant healing. You will find all the details online, of course, but you can write a letter, you can email, you can phone. There are many ways of contacting them. And um, it's uh, very well known, as I said, for distant healing. And from what we can see, it's, it appears to be very effective. So just in case you hadn't thought of that, sometimes something, in my case anyway, can be right under my nose and I don't see it or notice it until somebody reminds me of it. And so that's why um, I thought I'd mention that today, just a reminder. So um, thank you for joining us today. And before we close down, the, uh, start to close down, I'll just bring back your music a bit. Not sure what tune we're on now. Oh, it's um, Om Hum So Hum from Invisible Journeys, David Lord and Tim Wheater. So um, if you'd like to, once again, take your mind to the soles of your feet and see those tree roots going deeply down into the earth. If you wish, you may want to embed them in a deep crystal of any color you choose. 
and allow those chakras, those energy centers to balance themselves. So if you wish, you might like to see them as flowers, tulips, roses, any flowers you wish. And starting from the base, see that red flower start to close over. Not completely, you need to leave them open sufficiently for your needs. But see it start to close over. And as you move up the orange flower from the sacral chakra and up to the yellow flower from the solar plexus and up to the heart, it can be green, it can be pink. Up to the throat, usually pale blue, but whatever color resonates with you today. Up to the third eye, again indigo. And to the crown chakra, which is a violet white. And just see them all nicely balanced and closed sufficiently for you today. And thank you very much for joining us. And do wrap yourself in a cloak of protection or a bubble of protection or whatever method works for you. And you'll stay like that for the day. So um, leaving you, as I said, with um, Tim Wheatler and David Lord. And uh, I'll see you again in a couple of days. So thank you very much for joining us and see you again soon.